Hi, my name is Francieria Moore with the Prosperity Agenda and welcome to Coaching Up Close, our mini webinar series designed to work some quick tips into your busy schedule to help you improve your coaching skills. But first, let me introduce TPA. We are working to end persistent poverty, changing the way that we think about, build programs for, and coach families under financial stress. Coaching, of course, is a big part of our DNA and we work with organizations all over the country on their coaching programs. Before we jump in, if you're, look, if you're watching us live, we'll have a live question and answer session at the end of this webinar, so save your questions. And as a note, through the month of January, the Coaching Up Close webinar series will focus on the five principles of trauma-informed care. This series will focus on providing you with an understanding of how to recognize the impact of trauma on families and tools that could support you in working with healing families in communities. Please visit our website at www.theprosperityagenda.org to register for these upcoming webinars. Now, let's get started with today's session about committing to choice in trauma-informed care. Trauma-informed care, uh, as I've defined it for you before, trauma-informed care is a strengths-based framework that is grounded in an understanding of and a responsiveness to the impact of trauma. That emphasizes physical, psychological, and emotional safety for both providers and survivors. And this creates opportunities for survivors to rebuild a sense of control and empowerment. Uh, so today we're going to specifically be talking about choice in providing trauma-informed care. Trauma-informed care understands and considers the pervasive nature of trauma and pr promotes environments of healing and recovery rather than practices and services that may inadvertently re-traumatize our participants. One of the major ways that we can guard against re-traumatizing or triggering someone while they're receiving services is to create an environment that affirms the participant's power of choice. If any of us uh, think on this question for just any uh, brief amount of time, we can identify a moment where we were experiencing something that was uh, traumatic or, or anxiety producing or uh, uh, urgent and, uh, and feel that you don't have the power to make a choice. Rather, uh, if it's because you don't have the information that you need or if someone was not uh, believing in your ability to make a decision for yourself, I think all of us after a certain point in life can relate to the feeling of not having the power of choice. Um, and if you have been through anything traumatic uh, before and, and, there, and, the, and the spectrum for what is considered traumatic uh, changes across uh, time and situation in person, um, but if you've ever lost someone, if you've ever lost the thing that's been precious to you, that could be considered traumatic. And so to not have choice in that moment can re-trigger you. It can cause feelings of anxiety that could cause you to act out in various ways. Um, and so in coaching, we recognize that there are inevitable things that I can't control as the practitioner and there are things that the participant not, cannot control uh, that may look like um, program guidelines or compliance mandates. But there are many things that we can control, that we can give options to. You can offer participants choice in when, how often, and, 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 and where we provide services and where we meet. Um, you can offer participants uh, choice around who else might be included in this session. You know, some participants would prefer not to go through some of the uh, programs that, that are represented here on their own, and they may want a second set of ears or a second set of eyes or someone who can help them process this information. I know I prefer that. I'm in my 30s, and if I have a really big meeting uh, about something going on with me personally, I'm calling my mom like, hey, mom, I know you're all the way in Louisiana, but can you, can you come join me for this thing? Sometimes having the choice of uh, inviting someone else along in this process that may or may not be triggering for, for a participant can also help lighten the load uh, and provide that trauma-informed care. You can even offer them the choice about the direction of the session that day. Um, you can offer them that choice, okay? So, uh, hi, hi Ms. Johnson, I have here that we are going to talk about X, Y, and Z. I just wanted to check in with you to see if there's anything else that you would like to add to this agenda today, or if there's something else that seems more pressing for us to discuss, 
Okay. And so again, that is a that is opening up the conversation and providing choice within your session with that participant. Choice also acknowledges uh, the fluid nature in which change occurs. Coaches recognize the rate that the rate of change varies across time and task. Uh, choice also gives participants permission to explore different possibilities that they may not have considered before because they simply didn't have the time or the space or the opportunity to do so. Um, and so when we provide choice for our participants, we're also unlocking the gate to a realm of possibilities for them. Um, many times in coaching session, not many times, the point of any coaching session is to hold space for processing for the participant. It is not to get our agenda across. It is not to make sure that we move forward on, on these things. The whole point of having a coaching conversation or having a coaching interaction is so that you can hold space so that the participant can process. Why is that important? When the participant processes, the participant does show themselves to be the expert of their life. And that's what we want. We want to empower them. We want to affirm for them. We want to put them in situations where they begin to believe in their ability to indeed make choices. Uh, one of the core four coaching skills that we use in family center coaching is the skill of asking permission. By asking permission, you are giving the participant the choice to engage or disengage with what you have to offer. So an example of this would be I'm just going to keep going, Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson, um, I, I, I have uh, some, some information that I'd like to share with you. Are you interested in hearing it? Um, I, I, I have some information about a program. Is, would that be interesting for you? I would like to move our uh, appointment to 15 minutes later. Is that okay with you? Asking permission rather than assuming or just making choices on their behalf, again, puts them in the driver's seat. It empowers them to make choices. And, the, and, and even though they may seem like small, minuscule choices, it may even feel like, a, like an act at first, it is important that you have those moments where you pause and you ask permission before proceeding. I, I'm noticing something in your conversation. May I raise your awareness about something? Or I noticed this in, in what you were saying. Can we explore that a little bit more? Rather than to just, boom, throw out your opinion of what you've been seeing. I want to ask permission because you may or may not be ready to have that conversation with me, and I want to respect your choice in that matter. Uh, the fact is that everyone right now is experiencing a collective trauma. Everyone, if you live in the United States, and I would even venture to say across the world, everyone is experiencing uh, a collective trauma due to this pandemic, being in our homes, uh, being with our families, not being with our families, many things uh, are, are causing trauma across, across the country. Rates are going up uh, in, in, in several areas when we look at anxiety, depression, and so on. And so it is important um, that we recognize that we as practitioners are also impacted by this collective trauma that is happening. So we should be looking to provide spaces that work with families that are trauma-informed care. And we should also be looking to create spaces for ourselves as practitioners that also are, also are trauma-informed when it comes to what we might need for ourselves. Um, so, so choice is paramount when providing trauma-informed care because it protects not only the participant and their family, it also protects you. You want to make sure that the session's uh, mission is met and the session's mission is met when you pull the participant in to have voice in choice. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. It just happened that way. You want your participants to have voice in the choice that they make. In, in closing, uh, it is imperative that we provide trauma-informed care. Uh, and, and the priority is always to provide uh, safety mentally, physically, and emotionally for everyone. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us next month for more coaching tips and resources. And be sure to stick around for the question and answer portion. And of course, if you have any questions about our coaching training program, or if you would like to sign up for the next Coaching Up Close mini webinar, please visit the theprosperityagenda.org and check out our LinkedIn page. Thank you everyone for joining. See you next time. Bye.